Once again, the 30 strongest men from around the globe have assembled, all here with one simple goal, to make their mark in a sport which has grown into an international phenomenon and has garnered millions of fans worldwide. This year, the sport's premier championship celebrates its 40th anniversary with what many believe to be the most competitive and formidable field of strong men ever. Many expect that a rivalry of the ages will form with the return of Zadruna Zaviskas of Lithuania and reigning champion from the United States, Brian Shaw. Two men who have exclusively exchanged the trophy for the last eight years, each vying for a coveted record tying fifth win. But the climb to the top will not be easy. An epic field of competitors, Iceland's half door Julius Bjornsson, Great Britain's Eddie Hall, the USA's Martins Leipzig, and from Georgia, Konstantin Janasio, all with the same all or nothing goal, all with the determination and heart to become a champion. Today, the first group of competitors begin their quest. Only two of these six men will earn their place in the final. And with one of the toughest qualifying groups ever set, Brian Shaw will have a difficult task. It all begins now on the Corgenix World's Strongest Man. World's strongest man, our host is once again the African nation of Botswana. This time it's in the capital city of Habaroni. I'm Brent Stover alongside Aaron Taylor. Group one's qualifying round gets underway at Botswana's parliament building with the load and drag. Well, Brent, this is a two course meal where the strong men will have 75 seconds to load a couple of 243 pound sacks onto a platform. And then the fun begins by dragging a 772-pound cart as far down the 12-meter course as possible. The first three competitors of Group 1 are getting ready to take on the course. Colin Wolf, the three-time New Zealand Stoltman. strongest man. Tom Stoltman, the rookie from Great Britain, 22 years old, and younger brother to Slovenia. Luke Stoltman, another Matias competitor Belcha. this year. And Slovenia's Matias Belshuk. At 6'1", not the tallest athlete, but still plenty of power. Heat one, near lane, Matias Belshuk, middle lane, Tom Stoltman, and Calm Wolf in the far lane. I really like this event, Brent, because it involves athleticism and raw power. Right now, we're seeing the smooth transitions from these guys, but this is where power is necessary to fare well in this event. And because you have different apparatuses, you can see a sudden change in momentum, and we're seeing it right now. Colin Wolf at the top in lane three, 6'4", 392 pounds. That big mass and power really helping him move this cart down the course. Wolf indeed has the advantage in that far lane. You see a couple different techniques here. Some guys are staying a little bit more vertically, snapping the chain. The best technique, I think, is what Colum's doing, putting tension on that chain and then timing his power with his body, his legs, his back, and those big biceps. Final 10 seconds, if you're not gonna cross the line at this point, get as much distance as you possibly can. And Colum Wolf from New Zealand, as the time runs out, he's able to pull it 7.85 meters, and he is the winner of one, heat number one. Calm Wolf. Well, Brent, after a slow start, Wolf really picked up the speed using a perfect combination of technique and power to win this heat. In lane one from Canada, J.F. Carone. The second set of competitors up next to the load and drag. A 34-year-old from Canada, J.F. Carone. 6'2", 320 pounds. Then we have the 51-year-old from Great Britain, Mark Felix. He's 12th appearance at World's United Strongest States, Man. Brian Shaw! And last, but certainly not least, the reigning champion, Brian Shaw of the USA. And here they go. Brent, one of the things I'm seeing right out of the gate is how relaxed this group is compared to the first group. I think what they learned, seeing the previous three competitors do this event, was that slow and steady will win this race. 
on the second sack, and now it's on to the final apparatus. They will drag this cart to the other end. And now Felix goes down, Aaron. Yeah, a lot of these competitors are losing their balance because of this massive weight, but look at J.F. Caron at the top as we see Brian Shaw using a long, slow pull technique where J.F. Caron is kind of hopping using shorter, quick, explosive bursts. It's a mining cart that is 772 pounds. And in the far lane, looking strong, J.F. Caron. Especially looking strong, Brent, because this is 772 pounds on an uneven brick surface with a ton of friction. This is no easy feat. Metal on brick. Final two seconds. And J.F. Caron not only won the heat here, Aaron, but he has won the opening event in group number one. The Canadian gets it done. J.F. Caron with this hot technique. Look at that, it's some sort of barbaric rowing machine, and he makes it look easy. Canada's J.F. Caron coming out of the gate strong, winning the event, pulling the cart the furthest at 10.95 meters. The reigning champ, the American Brian Shaw in second, and Wolf finishes third. The second event here at Botswana's Parliament Building Plaza for Group 1 was the log lift. Let's see how they fared. Coming into this, on paper, I had the toughest group. We had three finalists from last year. Group 1 is very deep, a lot of good athletes. I guess my plan is just to fill out that first one, try to get the balance right, and then go from there. Five is a good number. I'm very happy about my result. Mark Felix, tough contender. I know you want to do this event because you can win. Uh, now we are Mark Felix, a little bit injured on the shoulder. It's okay. Talk. We don't know if we must to pull out, we must to, uh, wait tomorrow. I think Mark can continue with this injury because he's a tough contender, very uh, experienced. Come on, Tom. Press! You know, a lot of times I feel like through the qualifiers, if I don't get pushed a little bit, I get detrained because I train so hard. I was just trying to space it out, use the whole clock, and with this awesome crowd here, it was so loud that I actually couldn't hear the call on time. I thought I heard 15 seconds, and I went for that last rep, and then the whistle's blowing, and it didn't count. I know press is my good event, so six was the the goal, even beat Brian, is much great. The more than what we wanted, so I'm really happy with that. These guys are very talented. Belsack and Caron were both finalists last year in the top 10, so I can't overlook them. You know, the plan is to be in first after five events. Then Logliffe is not one of my best normally, but now I am equal for second place with Brian Shaw. It's uh, very good for me with five reps. And uh, now I am leading again by one point after two events. It's really good. Matias Belschuk from Slovenia, after a slow start in the first event, came out on top of the log lift. J.F. Corona and Brian Shaw tied for second, Tom Stoltman in fourth. Mark Felix and Colin Wolf share fifth. That second place tie helped to keep Corona at the top of the leaderboard. Shaw remains in second. Only a half point back from Shaw is Belschuk, and Felix is in last place. Now we've moved over to the Grand Palm Hotel and Casino, where Group 1 takes on their third test of strength, Pingles Fingers. Yeah, this is definitely a big man's event where longer arms and legs are an advantage, as each strongman will have to lift and flip over five fingers, ranging from 320 to a brutal 375 pounds. First up was Colm Wolf of New Zealand and Mark Felix from Great Britain. Felix with that left shoulder strain he got in the log lift, unable to get the first finger. Meantime, Wolf struggling a bit in the beginning, but still managing to get four fingers 
in 47.72 seconds. And that shoulder strain just too much for Felix. And he would end up withdrawing from the competition. And that's disappointment for all fans involved, the 51-year-old. But we move on, and here's Belshuk, the 333-pounder. Up next against Stoltman of Great Britain. And again, Aaron, the total weight of these fingers, 1,714 pounds. The fingers must be flipped 180 degrees. It's almost a hang clean movement to start to get the finger up vertically. Both of these competitors looking very good after their first 320 pound finger. Bell Shuck, long time veteran, has had a ton of success. He's got the early advantage, but Stoltman is right there. Bell Shuck's only 6'1, so his arms aren't nearly as long. He got four fingers a year ago, and he looks to be on pace to do the same here this year. Working their way to the final finger, which is a 375-pounder. Trying to see that funky monkey bar technique to get that finger over as we see Stoltman in the near lane not having success. So he is essentially checked out, and on goes Belshuk. This is 375 pounds, swinging on those monkey bars, trying to get this finger over and just can't. Heck of an effort by both competitors. Stolten gets three fingers in 23.46 seconds. And Belshuk, the leader now in this event, four fingers in 38.37. This event really requires a combination of both upper body and lower body strength. And that experience of Belshuk really helps him out here to get that fourth finger over. So he sets the pace. And it brings Jaya up Cole. our final group. <laughs> this is a real treat, Aaron. J.F. Corona of Canada and the four-time world's strongest Shaw. man champ and defending champ, the American Brian Shaw out of Colorado. What a tough group this is, Brent. Brian Shaw at 6'8", I would expect him to have an advantage, but again, J.F. Corona is not the type of guy you want to take for granted. This sets up beautifully, you want drama, We've got a couple of heavyweights in this sport for the last several years, and Shaw looking very good. Yeah, we heard him say he wanted to be in first place at a five event, so it's important that he finishes strong here. Again, from 320 pounds all the way to that final finger, which is 375, and Shaw has found a very nice rhythm. He certainly has. Six foot eight, just walking this 375 pound finger up, but this is where it gets hard, Brent the sticky point. Let's see if Shaw has what it takes to push this over. Can he do it? And he does. Meantime, Caron will settle for four fingers and fourth place in this event. It's uphill. And the winner of Ryan the Shaw, five fingers in 45. No surprise here. Gets all five fingers in 45.93 and wins the event. Ryan Shaw showing you why he's a four-time champion. Athleticism, power, and brute raw strength was all that was necessary for him to win this event. That win has pushed Ryan Shaw to the top of the leaderboard. After leading following the first two events, J.F. Corona has fallen to third. Tom Stoltman has also decided to withdraw from the competition due to a muscle tear. Brent Stover and Aaron Taylor, just a short distance outside the capital city of Pavaroni, is the Baharuzzi Cultural Lodge, a magnificent backdrop for Group 1's fourth event, the Deadlift. Brent, this is a classic test of strength indeed, as the competitors will be asked to lift a 770-pound weight off the ground until they're standing straight up as many times as possible in 60 seconds. Athletes have already competed in this event. First up was J.F. Caron of Canada. He's a tremendous headlifter. And he came in and he was strong, setting the bar at eight reps. So that would be the mark for others to follow. Up next was Colin Wolf of New Zealand. Again, eighth the number to beat, and it was a disappointment for Wolf. Wasn't able to get close to that mark. He'll go into second place with two reps here in the deadlift. 
two athletes remain. First up is Slovenia's Matiash Belshuk, currently in second after three events here in Group 1. Ready, pull! Remember, the number to beat is eight reps. Go! Vince, you see those wraps in front of their shins. Proper deadlift technique, and Belshak is putting it on display here. Has the competitors lift the bar straight up their shins because it keeps the knees in alignment and allows for the glutes, quads, and hamstrings to fire more efficiently. That'll be advantageous to already know the number to beat as opposed to going first. Belshak knows exactly what he needs, and he's closing in on that number. He certainly is as he gets credit for that seventh rep. It's going to be very hard for him to get eight. He's got to catch his breath here, dig deep, and find a way to gut it out. Four-time Slovenia's strongest man, Matias Belshuk, to a knee, and it's not going to happen. He calls it quits, shaking his head, coming up just one short, but it moves him into second here in the deadlift. A year ago, Belshuk lifted 882 pounds for a single rep as we see the ladies there on the left side of the screen cheering him on as he gets that seventh rep with 770 pounds. The good news for Shaw and the bad news for everybody else in the group is that he's got the lead after three events and he happens to be a phenomenal deadlifter. Power is not a problem for Brian Shaw. The man from Colorado who played college basketball at Black Hill State in Western South Dakota it just doesn't feel like it should be this easy. That's why he's a four-time champion, Brent. You'll see when he finishes at the top, he gets that big chest squeezing those lats. And you'll also notice he's got a little bit wider base and he's wearing shoes. A lot of these competitors like to go barefoot because it means they don't have to lift the bars far up off the ground. The number to beat is eight, and he's closing in on eight rapidly, or at least he was. Now taking a little bit of a break. See all that chalk helping him with his grip? And there he ties for the event win with his eighth, and he seems satisfied right there. So Shaw and Carone will share the deadlift. And with eight repetitions, representing the United States, Brian Shaw! One of the things that really sets Brian Shaw apart is his mental approach. He always seems to know exactly what needs to be done in every situation. His tie with J.F. Carone was enough to keep Brian Shaw in the lead with 21 points. Only one more event remains before that automatic advancement for the leader. J.F. has some work to do to catch up. over to the base of Pavaroni's majestic Cali Hill. Let's see how our athletes took on the fifth of their qualifying events, the bullion toss. So the bullion toss is an event where it's a progressive weight, so it starts with a lighter weight and then every pair goes up in weight to the top weight is the last two, obviously. So it's an event where as the weight goes up, you have to put more power into each throw and be more explosive to get over. Which is why typically you'll see some competitors throw the first two over like nothing and they get to the fifth or sixth one and all of a sudden it looks like they're not nearly getting as much power into it, but it's just simply because the weight gets heavier. It's one of those events where it's a time-coordinated explosive effort to get it over the bar. This event isn't as challenging as some of the other ones. I still was under some pressure to perform. I mean, I had to beat six. Uh, JF and Wolf had both done six. I needed to beat that to get in the final, essentially. Sometimes, you know, the top guys don't have to really work that hard, and I've had to work on every event. Even on top of the events, I've been putting in extra training sessions guys don't even know about. Because my whole focus with this contest is the final. Once I did seven, obviously all the fans are yelling, they want to see it, and nobody's been able to do it uh, up until that point. So I just went ahead and got it done and gave them a little show and had some fun with it. Oh, 
golf door and I with throwing events are, are very close. You know, for me to walk through them and make them look easy and have fun with it, it, it certainly will play on his mind a little bit. I have been around this game longer than he has, and I know how to play the games, and I know how to push the buttons, and that's what I like to do. And the winner of the Bullion Dog, representing the United States, Brian Shaw! Yeah! I'm still the champion, right? I, I'm coming in here, I'm the favorite. There's two men in this contest that have won titles and both of us have four, and we're both looking like it's, it's gonna be us in the final again. And so Eddie and Hofdor certainly are in the, the group of favorites, but they haven't managed to win. The events get heavier, they get harder, they're, you know, they get tougher, and that's where I'm really gonna show how strong I am. At the same time, I feel good. And everything is in place, I'm not too banged up. It's managing that stress, right, like going into the final. I'm the favorite, you know, that's not a secret. I'm looking forward to it. Now I get a little bit of rest and recovery work time and, and I should be ready to rock and roll. Brian Shaw was a clear winner of the event, the only athlete to toss all eight bars. Caron and Wolf both got six bars, JF just a hair quicker. Bell Shuck was only able to manage four. That win kept Brian Shaw as a leader. He automatically advances to the final. The other three competitors now must compete in the dreaded winner-take-all, last-man-standing event. A new event this year. The athletes will have to give it their all to earn the second spot in the final. The last event of the qualifiers, last-man-standing. Three remaining athletes compete for one spot in the final, seated on standings after five events. They got to lift a 352-pound stone over a bar, and when an athlete is eliminated, the next highest seat enters. The first two athletes up against each other, Colin Wolf is in fourth place against Belshuk, finishing in third after five events. Belshuk's superior lifting skills outmatch the New Zealanders who just ran out of time attempting his 11th lift. Next, Belshuk, who has already lifted 10 times, must continue against JF Caron. Does the Slovenian have enough cast to win against a fresh strongman? Back to the action right now. And Caron has stepped in to take on Matiak, whose stamina seems unwavering so far. It certainly does. Is it going to be that big heart? of Matias Belshuk or the fresh legs of JF Caron that bring this home. You see how important the tacky is on this Atlas stone. Tacky's that sticky substance that you can see stretching. 352 pounds of steel and concrete with no handles is extremely hard to lift. So the athletes use that substance to allow them to even hold on to this thing as these two competitors are facing off face to face with so much at stake. You've called this in the past a cruel game of hot potato. <laughs> and it certainly seems to be the case as Belshuk completing his 14th lift in a row of that massive stone. While Corona has only had to do four. I liken it to ping pong. But again, instead of a tiny little plastic ball, you get that. At some point, Brent, something has to give here. Belshek with so much heart and determination showing you his power, but JF Caron looking very efficient as this contest extends. You wonder if Caron feels any kind of pressure because he is expected. Like, this is a massive upset if you don't win this. And Belshuk seems still pretty relaxed out there. He seems relaxed, but he said, hey man, how much longer can I keep this up? Corona is so powerful and so fresh. I was an underdog to begin with, and we may be seeing the last of what Belshuk can bring to the table, but he gets another one over. These fans in Botswana are loving it, and they have a ton of respect for the way this thing is laid out. Does Belshuk have any gas left in the tank? He certainly still does. You see the crowd behind them, each chanting for the guy they want to win. But again, Brent, you said it. Jeff Crone's expected to win. No crowd cheering. Listen to this. Chanting his name, and he does it. Even if he doesn't win it, this has been outstanding to watch from Belshuk as Corone again has a nice rhythm. And Belshuk says, that's it. I did what I could do. 
and Corone with that advances to the final. And you can tell Belshuk is proud of his performance, calling it quits after an amazing 19 lifts, whereas JF only had to do 10 to defeat the Slovenian. Good sportsmanship out of both guys. Final standing Shaw from the USA. Corona of Canada will be the two that advance to the final. Belshuk just missed his opportunity, but I have a feeling this isn't the last we'll see of him. Two men have earned their ticket to the sport's biggest game. Tune in next time with Group 2 beginning their journey, all seeking the top spot on the largest stage in strength athletics. Will Iceland's half-door Julius Bjornsson be able to finally claim the crown? Yeah! Or will Martins Leedsies from the U.S. improve on a stellar performance from last year and win it all? Taylor and our entire crew, I'm Brent Stover. This has been a presentation of IMG Original Content.